All right, so we have a new Ghostbusters coming out. It looks terrible. It's probably going to be terrible. All the things the cast and director are saying to insult the fans rather than to win over the fans makes me not want to see it. But at the very least, let's all agree on one thing. If this movie's bad, if it's as bad as we all think it is, let's not use the phrase, it ruined our childhood, because the original Ghostbusters still exists, and we can always brush the new one under the rug and enjoy the original any day of the week. This is Ghostbusters, directed by Ivan Reitman and stars Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, Sigourney Weaver, Rick Moranis, and Ernie Hudson. The movie follows three scientists, Peter Venkman, played by Bill Murray, Ray Stans, played by Dan Aykroyd, and Egon Spangler, played by Harold Ramis. They are three scientists who study paranormal activity, and after encountering a ghost in the New York City library, they decide to go into the business of being ghost exterminators, or Ghostbusters. So they start busting ghosts left and right all over New York City, but their very first client, a woman named Dana, who's played by Sigourney Weaver, has some weird paranormal activities going on in her icebox, uh, which lead into a much bigger plot of biblical proportions. So the less I say, the better, because it's actually really difficult to try to explain that whole area, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. Everyone in the world has seen Ghostbusters. I would actually be shocked if there's somebody out there who did not see this original movie, but I'm willing to bet most people have seen it, and you all know that it's really one of the greatest movies ever made. In fact, this is my favorite comedy of all time. Anytime I think of Ghostbusters or just watch a little segment of it, this stupid grin pops up on my face, and I start chuckling or laughing hard. This thing is so funny. And one of the things that really helps is the very clever, well-written script by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis. All of the jokes hit, and all of the cast members, along with Ivan Reitman's direction, help make it as funny as it is. And what I love about the comedy is that it's not set up slapstick or just goofy humor around. There are goofy moments, but most of the comedy, I'd say like 98% of the comedy, comes from its characters and the situations they're put in. And what also helps is that everyone plays this movie straight. Because they play the movie straight, it somehow makes it even funnier than it would be if they played it completely goofy. And all the characters are great, and they all have different personalities that play off each other perfectly. For the Ghostbusters, we have Ray Stans, played by Dan Aykroyd, who's basically the kid whose eyes are wide open, he's excited about everything. He's the most optimistic of the group, and kind of acts like a child, but not in a way where you want to slap him in the face, just that he's super excited about the job. Then you have Egon Spangler, played by Harold Ramis, who is the serious scientist. He's the main one who really plays it straight, like he's in a serious movie. But he has some really funny moments because he plays it so seriously. He's the one that comes up with the gadgets, he's the one who comes up with all the scientific babble. He's basically the brains of the group. Then you have Peter Venkman, played by Bill Murray, who is the only one of the three scientists who feels like he scammed his way into being a scientist. He didn't actually earn a PhD in anything. He just faked his way into being a scientist, much like the way Bill Murray crashes weddings in real life. Bill Murray's deadpan performance here is just so brilliant. That's Bill Murray's sense of humor, regardless. He's the master of sarcasm, and nobody can make you laugh at a deadpan face more than Bill Murray can. Then we have the fourth Ghostbuster, Ernie Hudson, who plays Winston. He comes in late in the movie, and he's the only Ghostbuster who's not a scientist, but you know what? He's the everyday man. He's the regular, casual guy off the streets who does a good job and has really good intentions. I just really wish Ernie Hudson was in it more because he does such a good job with the role, and he even works well with the other three guys. For your non-Ghostbusters, we have Sigourney Weaver who plays Dana. Out of all the characters in this movie, she might be the least interesting of the bunch. That's not to say she's bad, it's just everyone else is much more memorable. She's a love interest for Peter Venkman, but she does a really good job, and she's very likable in the end. Then you have Rick Moranis, who plays Lewis, Dana's neighbor from across the hall. And this is the only character I've seen in a movie that I can remember, whose character is a mix of nerdy, insecure, and just downright pathetic. But at times, you do feel sorry for the guy. His whole goal in the movie is to try and win Dana's heart. Uh, he really wants to be her boyfriend. Uh, 
but Dana just tries to sneak past him. She's reluctant to be near him. And there are points where you just feel sorry for him, especially when Peter Venkman comes in and pretty much does everything that Lewis should do if he wants to win Dana over. Because, yeah, Peter Venkman might be an asshole, but at least he's funny and he's very calm and cool about it. One other cast member who I don't think gets that much attention when people talk about Ghostbusters is Annie Potts, who plays the secretary for the Ghostbusters, Janine. She's very deadpan. She doesn't really care about her job, but she has some really funny moments, and she really does have the hots for Egon Spangler. Out of all the other Ghostbusters, Egon's the one that she sees as the most brave and the most manly of the bunch. The movie also has a lot of great special effects. The ghost effects are really charming and also downright scary. The very first clip I ever saw of Ghostbusters when I was browsing through the channels as a kid was Slimer coming out of the hot dog stand eating all those hot dogs. I saw that out of context and I didn't know what the hell that was. All I know was that it frightened me. And that's one really good thing Ghostbusters does. It blends horror and comedy perfectly, but it's not like Evil Dead where it's like half a horror movie, half a comedy. There is more comedy, but the little bit of horror that it does have is actually very effective. There are a few scary moments in this movie, which is good. And what's also great about the special effects is that they don't overshadow the characters or the jokes. The comedy takes center stage while the special effects take a back seat and help serve the comedy and the characters. Is there anything that's wrong with Ghostbusters? Anything at all? Well, having just seen the movie last night and prepped for this review, there is one thing that I don't want to say it's a negative, but I feel like I should address, which is the Ray Parker Jr. song. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a really memorable song. It's a great song. It got an Oscar nomination, for God's sake. But with Ghostbusters as a whole being a timeless classic, I feel like the Ghostbusters song is very much an 80s song. I love listening to the song, but it very much feels like it's stuck in the 80s while the rest of the movie stands the test of time. Again, that's not really a negative. It's just my personal impressions of the song when watching this movie again. Because in the long run, Ghostbusters is absolutely fantastic. It's well written. The actors do a great job. The, it's well directed. It's funny as hell. Like There are many, many laugh out loud moments. Many iconic scenes like when they catch Slimer, the ghost librarian, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And there's so many great one-liners, which I'm going to name five of my favorite one-liners right now. Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. Go ahead, tell him about the Twinkie. What about the Twinkie? Or the alternative of the Twinkie conversation. That's a big Twinkie. I have seen shit that'll turn you white. Sorry, Vakeman. I'm terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought. It's hard for me to quote these one-liners without at least smirking, so I apologize. And then lastly, one of my favorite lines, because I just wanted to list five. He slimed me. So, I mean, you can tell, like, anytime I think of Ghostbusters or quote Ghostbusters, I laugh. And that's the power of this movie and how well it stood the test of time as one of the best comedies ever made. So, my rating for Ghostbusters is, if you've not seen this movie, you need to get off your ass and go see it right now. Because it truly is a great, great comedy. One of the best ever. And it still stands the test of time as being... A fantastic movie in every angle. And that's my review for Ghostbusters. Check in next week where I'll review Ghostbusters 2. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this review. I can't wait to hear what your guys' thoughts are on the original Ghostbusters. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out my official website. And you can also go follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, Rift.tv. And if you love what I'm doing on this channel, you can go support me at Patreon.com slash TheRealMrRobinson and give out a small monthly donation. And in return, you you get special rewards. If you don't, that's fine. You just get a little something extra. So until next time, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.